So hi everyone, I'm Hamdi Ibrahim, I'm an assistant professor in the mechanical engineering department at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. I joined the university two years uh, or two and a half years now and I work in different uh, uh, research projects towards biomedical applications. So today I'm going to give you a quick introduction about uh, what we do, what is my research uh, areas and um, yeah and see if you can like it and if maybe if you be able to join us in the future hopefully. So um, the main uh, topic we, I work on is designing and manufacturing biomaterials in particularly biodegradable materials for the use as for biomedical applications. One of the projects is in patient specific biodegradable implants and how we can manufacture them by additive manufacturing. So patient specific means they are designed for the patients and biodegradable, I will explain it in a little bit. And additive manufacturing is a 3D printing. So when we say biodegradable bone implants, what we mean by that, we mean a material, just to explain that for you, that is expected to corrode in the body with a sufficient strength and corrosion rate and biocompatibility so it doesn't harm the body. And once it completes its mission, in case of bone, bone is healed, it completely degrades and goes away. Plastic can be one of biodegradable polymers or plastics in general, like PLA. Surprisingly, some metals can be biodegradable, like iron and magnesium and zinc, it can be in a form of an alloy, as you can see, or a matrix composite. I'm sure many of you of mechanical engineering will be aware of that. Next slide, please. So why do we need biodegradable bone implants? So currently in use uh, fixation hardware on implants, I'm sure some of your uh, family members of you personally had broken bone and you have some screws in place in your body. So they are known to have a lot of problems, especially permanent ones like titaniums that they can cause stress shielding, uh, which means the bone resorbs because of the existence of this fixation or some infections or fracture of the bone itself because of activities that can be done. So all of these problems require a biodegradable material that can fix the bone still until it's healed, which is designed for the patients. And once bone is healed, it completely degrades and goes away. So the working mechanism that we are envisioning for these implants, you manufacture them. And I'll explain in the next slides how we envisioning that in our research in a form of screws or plates implant them in the body for the fractured bone, maxillofacial, hands, extremities. These are good applications for that. And as you can see in this picture, this is an example of a screw. After several months, it starts to degrade gradually and goes away. And the key here that magnesium and metals in particular allow for the bone to take over the space once they degrade and you put bone and the bone grow inside that uh, space. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so when we said patient is specific for our research, uh, we want them to be designed for the patients. So this is a schematic of how we are envisioning our project. Uh, you can start, we have many projects within this uh, idea of that research approach. So it starts with the, the MRI of the patients. You scan them segment them with some softwares, create a CAD model, or a CAD file that represents that case for that patient. We're talking about realistic case that happens in the hospital, we can do that. And then using other softwares, we can do meshing and then a subscription for the patient itself. So this is an example of a mandible for a patient. And engineers can design the fixations based on that case, strength, corrosion rate, geometry, everything. And we use some post-processing treatments like heat treatment and coatings to strengthen and control the corrosion or the degradation rates. So we focus on all these areas of our research, typically. Next slide, please. And these are some examples of parts that has been produced by 3D printing or additive manufacturing. And when we use additive manufacturing, because they allow for complex shapes to be created that cannot be created by conventional methods. That's why we focus on additive manufacturing. Next slide, please. So I want to explain 
quickly for you also what is additive manufacturing. Some of you are aware of additive manufacturing, but I will briefly explain to you how we use it and what is the concept behind it. So the concept behind additive manufacturing is creating a complex structure, a layer by layer. So you create one layer and then create another layer and then build another layer from powder or from a molten material, whatever the option that you're using. So as you can see here, this is a CAD model. You need a CAD model that you create on the computer, feed it to the, com the, to the machine, and the machine will create a layer, like let's say the red layer, and then another layer. Once it's built, goes down, build another layer, and that allows for the complex shapes to be created. So next slide, please. So there are different methods of creating these layers. This is one of the most common methods, especially in case of metals. You start with a powder, and the powder is in the left chamber, as you can see here, and the right chamber as well. You have two chambers for the powder. And you have a roller, and in the middle, you have a building chamber. And as the name suggests, there is a laser that will melt each la layer selectively to solidify certain parts and don't solidify the others. So by doing this, you create one layer that is solid, and the, in this layer, the rest is still powder. You go down with the building pos uh, build position uh, piston in the middle one, in the building chamber, and put another layer with the, with the roller, and then melt it again with the laser beam. And you can see the laser beam comes from the laser source, go to the lens, a mirror, and to the layer. And this is one of the most successful methods of 3D printing metals, starting from powder and using laser to melt them selectively. Next slide, please. So another way of dealing with the powder as well, and we also do focus on research on that, is binder jetting. So instead of using a, a, a laser beam to 3D print or to melt, sorry, the layer, we use a, a printing head with a, a binder inside. So we jet this binder selectively in specific locations to solidify the layer. And you also do the same thing. Go down with another layer of the powder and selectively bind them. This usually is not a very strong structure, so we can center it. If you are aware of that term, like do some heat treatments to make it stronger after it's created. And uh, next slide, please. So this is the most common and famous uh, and affordable method of 3D printing that many of you are aware of it, uh, I would assume, which is FDM, which uses uh, a, a molten material, which is usually made of plastic that comes out of a nozzle so instead of having a powder that you melt or center, you like extruding a molten material from the end of the nozzle to create any part. This is, as I mentioned, affordable. And I'm sure some of you have seen this uh, 3D printing machines before. So um, again, I want to mention that if you join our online, uh, we have also, by the way, some uh, courses online. We can have them also online graduate level are focused on additive manufacturing and biomaterials. So we also teach not only doing research on that, we teach two uh, courses in these topics, biomaterials for biomedical applications and additive manufacturing in general. These courses are offered in certain, some semesters. Um, if you work and decide to do some projects or thesis research with us, there are potential of doing some of these projects online by designing and doing some simulation for the corrosion rate. And uh, you don't, of course, have to come here and do additive manufacturing or uh, heat treatment or coating here in the lab, but you can collaborate with other students here, designing uh, everything from home and work from students here and me and other professors to achieve these goals. Mm -hmm.